the year 2008. This is the year Obama was elected, uh, the year that Heath Ledger played one of the best Jokers, uh, the year that one of the most popular cell phones was a thing called a Blackberry. Uh, this is also the year that CNC Software released a piece of software called Mastercam X3. Now the reason I'm bringing up Mastercam X3 when obviously we all know Mastercam 2020 has just been released, I wanted to take a little bit uh, different approach here and compare the latest and greatest Mastercam to some of the older versions. And in today's video, I'm gonna do a little comparison between X3 and Mastercam 2020. Okay, so up on screen here, I've got uh, obviously Mastercam X3 and I'll switch over quick to 2020. And uh, obviously there's a huge difference between the two of them. Um, 2020 looks a lot newer, fresher. X3, uh, I'm sure back in 08, this was fantastic. But today, um, yeah, so carrying on. So what are we gonna be doing? I'm working with a, this is actually a demo part from Mastercam 2017. Uh, it's a little bracket, it's got some nice 2D stuff in it and I'm basically gonna focus on some of the 2D chaining in the, in, with the high speed tool paths. And I've got this part saved out as a, as a uh, parasol binary file and I'll bring it into both versions and just throw uh, one quick tool path on it and look at the differences. So first up, uh, I'm gonna start in X3 and if you've been working with Mastercam recently, you know that if you've got your Windows Explorer and you've got a file that you want to open, you can drag and drop it and it will open. So in X3, I can't do that, which is uh, frustrating because that means I have to go to the file open menu and browse and try and remember where I actually saved this file, which was in here. I have to switch my part types, okay. This is uh, standard, okay, there's the guy I want, and hit open. Okay, so again, this is a, a default install of X3. I haven't, I haven't customized this at all. Um, I do need to turn on the shading of my solid so I can actually see it. And now that we can see it, so my, I'm using my 3D mouse here. It's a little touchier in X3 than it is in the newer versions, but that's not a, anything to really worry about. Uh, but it does, doesn't does look as good as the newer versions. The solid itself just doesn't look um, as clean or as uh, graphically good as newer versions. Obviously, software that's 11 years old, that's that's going to be the case. Um, any people who game, I'm sure if you've got a game that's 11 years old, it obviously doesn't look as good as a game that you bought uh, three weeks ago. Uh, so to try and improve this a little bit, I'm just going to maybe... Um, change the color of the wireframe. I think I have to right click on this. Again, it's been a while since I worked on the older versions. Okay, so with the black uh, wireframe, it looks a little bit better. And I think maybe if we thicken those lines a little bit, it'll look even better still. Let's try a little thicker. Okay, so it's looking uh, a little bit better now, and I think it's uh, good enough to carry on with. So what I want to do in this part is basically this pocket here, I want to machine that. Um, so obviously you can see it's um, it's got two open edges, one off this side and one off of this side. So this part has been slightly modified from the 2017 uh, demo file, if you are familiar with that file at all. And now in Mastercam 2003, let's go ahead and load a machine up. Default machine is fine. And I'm gonna machine this pocket. Uh, so as far as choices for tool paths, we don't have much if you're used to the newer interface. We've got our, our contour, which we don't wanna do. We wanna pocket this out. So we've got pocket. We have a 2D high speed option here, but this is not the 2D high speed you're used to seeing in newer Mastercam. This is not the dynamic interface. For this, uh, I think we can grab that face there just for now, just to get into the tool path here and have a look. So this is the older high speed, which is uh, core mill, uh, blend mill, area mill, rest mill, peel mill. Uh, so the only kind of chip thinning was the peel mill, I can't even say it, peel mill tool path. Um, and that technology has obviously been uh, 
surpassed long ago. Uh, X4, I think, was, there, was a, there was a big jump, and obviously uh, there's been jumps ever since. So we don't have any of the chip fitting tool paths, or the, the tool engagement um, tool paths that we're used to in the newer software. Uh, when we can really push our end mills a lot harder, get optimum removal rates. So even with this, uh, we don't have great chaining options. I have I can I can chain a core, and would get a shape like this. That's not so much the case over there. Um, a, a cavity or an area like this is probably a better choice. But I would want to get outside of these open edges. And with the geometry I've selected right now. Um, it's going to think that this edge is in fact a wall and it's not going to go outside of that wall. So I'm not going to use this tool path. Although I could, I, I was going to use a pocket mill tool path. Um, some might be thinking we can just use a pocket mill tool path. Sorry, I'm fumbling between menus. I'm trying to remember where the pocket mill tool path is located. So we can use pocket mill and we can do an open style pocket. Uh, however, we can't do an open style pocket with two edges, two open edges. So this is not gonna work in X3. And to get this to really work correctly, choosing either pocket or high speed, uh, we would have to create some additional geometry to chain off of. So what I would have to do is make an edge come up or some wireframe up and over. And depending how the toolpath behaved, I may even need to extend this side over here with some wireframe um, to get it to cut this whole feature all in one in one tool path. So I'm gonna do some geometry creation here and uh, with some movie magic, hopefully you will uh, uh, fast forward past the boring geometry creation part. Okay, so we got some geometry there. Again, I didn't make a uh, super precise geometry here. I just, I just placed some wireframe down that I, I think will allow this tool path to work correctly and get it done quickly. And let's go into our tool path here. Let's do the, uh, the the pocketing motion here. And let's grab, um, we'll grab this maybe, let's just do a, I'm indecisive right now. Let's do a partial loop. Alrighty, so I've got some geometry drawn there in there now. Okay, so I've got some geometry drawn in. Uh, basically, um, I'm extending off of the floor and making a boundary that I can uh, uh, use to extend my pocket off this open edge and some geometry over here to extend off that open edge. And I've got a point here that I'm going to use to force the entry of my tool into this open area. Okay, so it's a little bit extra geometry creation in here. I had to do to get the desired tool motion. Let's go into a pocket. Let's do some chaining. Let's grab our entry point there. And then our chain, I should be able to grab this and help it get around here. Okay, a couple of clicks. Okay, so I think that's all the way around now. Um, and hit OK. Just gonna use this half inch end mill that comes in with the operation. That's fine, it doesn't really matter. Standard pocket cutting is good. The depth is uh, is correct. We can double check to be sure. Uh, top of the stock doesn't really matter. I'm just doing one cut at the floor depth and, and away we go. Uh, we will have to check box the center on the entry point we've selected. Let's hit okay. Parallel spiral sounds good. Spiral inside and out, great. One finish pass on the outside, sure. Hit okay. And here is our finished tool path. Okay, so there, it's plunging over there. This is all feeding motion now. Um, again, this is complete cutter burial for that first little bit there until it starts to work back, which, depending on your speeds and feeds, may or may not be optimal. And in these open areas, see that, that motion right there, that's, that's feed motion all the way from the end of this cut all the way up into here. So that's kind of a drawback. It's just because of the chaining method of a I've had to use to uh, encase all of my geometry. And same with that motion up here. So that cutter is all the way outside of the pocket, uh, but it's being forced to feed all the way across there at the cutting motion feed rate. Okay, so anyways, not too bad. 
a uh, little bit extra work in some geometry creation. Uh, toolpath is not great because we don't have any chip fitting options, so we can't really push the cutter. We have to program for worst case scenario, which would be uh, that first cut when the, the cutter is completely buried, uh, 100%. Sorry, that would be 90, or sorry, 180 degrees of engagement. Uh, so let's switch over to 2020 and uh, do the same thing and see if I can do it any quicker, I guess. So here's our brackets. So drag and drop. We've got drag and drop in the newer versions of Mastercam. That's super useful. Uh, machine type. We're using a mill. Uh, it does come in in the correct location. And again, um, I'm trying to do this pocket here with those open edges. Uh, so we're in the newer software, so we might as well use the latest and greatest tool paths, dynamic motion. So the dynamic motion, basically I'm going to come in here and tell it what I want to cut. I want to cut, uh, I want to cut that face right there. That's an easy selection. And um, I want to allow it to cut outside of these open edges. So I've got air regions here. I can come in here and I'm just going to come over here and grab edge number one, edge number two, hit OK. And that's it. That's done. Um, the tool, I'll go with the default. The three quarters fine. It's a little bit bigger than the, the X3, but the point will be, uh, be made here. Uh, zero stock. I don't have to tell this anything about entry motion uh, because it's got some open edges. It knows it can plunge out here. Uh, incremental depth, because I grabbed that face, that's going to be correct. Top of stock is at, uh, we're going with Z0. Not doing any depth of cut, so um, that's it. That's all I have to do. Green check. There's a tool path. Quick little back plot. It starts outside the pocket, and it immediately engages in the material. And we're doing our chip thinning uh, motion. So even when it comes out of this pocket, I think if we uh, get into a top view here and turn this on, we can get an idea of how it's engaging material as it's coming out of the pocket. So you can see at every point in this operation, uh, this toolpath knows where the remaining stock is and how it needs to get at that stock. Okay, so that's obviously a, a huge benefit. Uh, basically, you just got to tell it what it needs to cut, where it has open edges, what it needs to avoid. Click OK, and you've got a toolpath. So even with me editing out the geometry creation I had to do in X3, uh, you can see there's a huge time savings uh, in comparison between X3 and 2020, which hopefully you would expect that. There's you know 11 years of uh, software development. A lot of people have put a lot of hard work into uh, those upgrades year by year. Uh, but I just thought that would be a fun look uh, to compare the newest, latest, and greatest version of software to some of the older stuff. And maybe in the next video, we'll pick something a little newer, maybe a more uh, apples to apples comparison, a little closer comparison. Maybe we'll look at X9 versus a 2020 feature.